In a previous video, I went over how to calculate the number of protons, neutrons, and electrons in atoms, ions, and isotopes. In this video, I'm going to go over how chemists find the atomic mass of elements on the periodic table using the isotopes of that element. We're going to use two separate equations, but before we even get to these equations, let's define atomic mass and let's look at one specific example of an element chlorine, of the element chlorine, sorry, and that one only has two isotopes. So atomic mass is defined as the weighted average of all the naturally occurring isotopes of an element. So the element that I'm going to focus on that we're going to find which ones are naturally occurring isotopes of chlorine in this case. And what are the weighted averages? That involves the abundance of that isotope and the mass of that isotope. So let's take a look and kind of zoom into chlorine here. Chlorine has a atomic mass of 35.45. So I'm just going to write that down here that chlorine has an atomic mass of chlorine is 35.45. And then the unit usually we use at the start of the of the you know atomic structure chapter is AMU atomic mass units but later on in the in their you know in their chemistry you will use grams per mole but for right now let's just use AMU so how do chemists get that that as the atomic mass for chlorine so i'm going to use some kind of rounded numbers here to make the math a little bit easier so the first thing i'm going to do is write down that there are two possible isotopes of chlorine One's called chlorine 35 and one's called chlorine 37. They both have the atomic number of 17. So again, this was chlorine 35. It's kind of from the last video I made. And this one was called chlorine 37. I'm just going to do a quick little list below here. They both have 17 protons, 17 electrons, and then this one has 18 neutrons. And if you add up the protons and the neutrons, that's how you get the mass number. So if I take the protons and I add it to the neutrons, in this case it's 17 plus 18, that's where that mass number came from. And again, this one has 17 protons. If it's neutral, 17, electro 17 electrons. Sometimes chemists will even put a little zero up there. And then this one has 20 neutrons. So again, that's how we, we got to the 37. The next thing I need to know is not only what are the two isotopes, but what kind of abundance do they have uh, in nature or naturally occurring? And these are really rounded numbers, so we're going to keep it pretty simple here. It's 75% and 25% abundant. So these are the two isotopes and then their abundances. So what I'm going to do is take this first equation and show you how I get pretty close to the atomic mass number of 35.45. All right, so let's get started. So I'm going to show you how I use this equation number one. The summation sign, I kind of carry that out a little bit differently. What I like to do is kind of do, this is going to use the equation one, I'll just call it A and B. I kind of like to do these two separate, and then I like to summate them, which is what this sign means, it's a sigma, summate them, and then add them together. So for example, I'm going to take the percent abundance, which is 75, I'm going to divide it by 100, and so I kind of put these two together, and then I'm going to multiply that by the mass of the isotope. So right now we're going to use a pretty rounded number. Usually the masses of an isotope have decimal values. But for right now, let's just say it's 35. And then that portion of this isotopic calculation gives us 26.25. Next, I'm going to take the other one as 25% and then multiply it by 37. And I get a 9.25. Two, five. So here are my two portions of the atomic mass, and then I have to summate them, which means I have to add them together. So what that means is if I were to sum these, all right, I would have to take each portion, you know, this section right here, okay, and then this section right here. But instead of doing that, I'm just going to put the answer, because I already have it in the, you know, in the brackets and then plus the 9.25, just to save some room this first one. And I get 35.5 as the atomic mass. Now remember, I had really rounded numbers here. I didn't have any decimal values for the abundance. I didn't have any decimal values for the actual mass numbers. I just used the, the protons and neutron count. You'll see in our examples that some of these isotopes, if you look carefully, they have much more detailed masses that round to you know, something like 35 or 37. Now, before we even move on, I want to look at why does this make sense? So the atomic mass on the periodic table 
is a little bit more accurate. Remember, it was 35.45. So both these are pretty close. So this is, I'm going to call PT. Now, why does that make sense? So think of it logically if you go back to here. If it was 35 and 37, these were the only two choices. If it was 50-50, it would have been right on the middle, which would have been 36. But keep in mind, the 35 isotope was much more abundant. So it makes sense that this average ends up being closer to 35 than to 36, or definitely closer, than, you know, closer to 35 than 37. So a lot of students get really confused because they, they really want these to be 50-50, and they're not. So the weighted average would not be 36, which is cutting those two right in the middle. Isotopes will always have a unique specific abundance that will affect the portions that when you add those portions up, I get the final answer. Again, notice one more thing. I'm going to put a little disclaimer in here, and I'm actually going to put this in like a bright green. Notice how we never uh, divided by the number of isotopes. That is a really common thing that students try to do at the end of all this, and you never divide by the number of the isotopes. Once you get this weighted average, here's my final answer, I'm done. I'm not gonna divide by the number of the isotopes. I've already done that by taking the percentages here and getting a weighted average. All right, so let's go on to two more, kind of more detailed examples uh, that I have on this sheet, okay? We're gonna do dysprosium and then europium. Now for sample one, we are gonna use equation one again, okay? So we are gonna use equation one here. But for this one, we're gonna use this second equation. It only works if there's only two isotopes. So we can't use equation two unless there's only two isotopes. All right, so I'm just gonna assume that you have a calculator so you can kind of follow along here and then I'll just switch over to uh, just a black color, make it kind of clean looking here. So if I wanna find the atomic mass, and I'll line these up this time, I need to summate, meaning I need to add up, okay, all these portions. So there's, there's, there's one, two, three, four, five, six, there's seven isotopes here for this element dysprosium. So I'm gonna have seven you know, brackets that I'm gonna have to add up. So let's just get started. So I need to take this number and I need to divide it by 100. So I'm gonna do that and just put it in here at 0. 0.0. 0, 0, 006. Check on your calculator if you don't understand why. And if you want to put that in parentheses, you can. And then we're going to multiply it by the very accurate, oops, sorry, um, it's 155.92, the very accurate mass. Okay, so the mass number might be 156, but its exact mass was 155.92. And then we just have to keep repeating this. Okay, so then I need to take my next isotope right here and I need to divide that, that abundance by 100, and I get 0 0.001, and then I need to multiply that by, again, the mass of it, which is 157.92. So it's kind of a long one, but it gives you kind of a repetitive nature here, so hopefully this will be one and done. And then I just have to keep doing this for all the isotopes. So I just go on to the next one, I take the percent right here, and I divide it by 100, kind of do that step together, and then I'm just gonna zoom in here, and then that one is going to be 0 0.0234 multiplied by that specific isotope's mass, which was 159.92. And then you're gonna repeat this for all the other isotopes, okay? So I wish I could kind of speed up the video, but this might be a good time if you get the hang of it. I'm just gonna go on to the next one, divide that by 100, multiply it by the uh, mass. I'm just gonna kind of zoom in and just kind of assume that you can see the chart yourself. So 0 0.189, and then I'm just gonna you know, keep using parentheses, although I probably would not, because uh, it takes up a lot of room. And then keep going so that you have all the isotopes. So I should have, again, remember seven of these brackets. Because I don't think I'm gonna fit it on the next line, I'm just gonna move down here and do the next one here. So that was the uh, 0.189, so now we're on to the 0.255, kind of nicely, because now we see the table above. 161.93, almost done. Okay, so we got this one done, and now we're on to the, uh, the one that was 24% abundant. At this point, you might wanna even make an estimation as to what would you kind of predict the mass, atomic mass would be. So this is 0 0.249, multiplied it by the 162.93. And last but not least, my seventh isotope is 0 0.282 and then 
163.93. All right. Now, if you add all of that up, I'm just going to do this. I won't do each separate portion. You get 162.44 as the AMU, okay? Or like I said, later on, you might do 162.44 grams if I had what's called one mole. And that's going to be coming, you know, I would think in your chemistry future soon. If I wanted to check, you know, how accurate was this data compared to what the periodic table has, I would have to go up here and find dysprosium, which is dy, and look it up and find its atomic um, mass. So right here is dy, it's element 66, and 162.5. So I'm not getting, you know, identical data, but again, this is just my data that I had, okay? All right, so now what do we do if we know the mass? This is very different. Some people call it molar mass, so you might see that too. Atomic mass, a lot of times people will call that the same as molar mass. It's just the mass for one mole. So this, this says that it's a 151.96. What that means is we know that that is what's, what it's all equal to. So this is that equation number two. We know the atomic mass, and we know the two isotopes. Okay, so let me do the brackets here. We know one of them is, um, I'll do the mass a second, 150.92. And we know the other one is, we don't know the percents though, we just know it's 152.92. But we don't know the percent. So what you do is you basically say, if I don't know these percents, then what would they possibly be? Okay, so again, if you want to kind of estimate, kind of like last time, take a look if you never did estimate. Does it make sense that we, since we have, you know, quite a bit of the weighted averages towards these really high weighted uh, mass isotopes, kind of makes sense that it's towards the 162 because of all these uh, very heavy isotopes. Take kind of a look at this one and say, okay, maybe I could kind of estimate. It's pretty close to 152. This is about 151, and this is 153. So you can kind of make a guess about what would be the two percentages that might make this happen. But you don't have to guess. You just make 1x and 1, 1 minus x. Now, I don't use 100 minus x because remember, if this was before with the chlorine, this would have been 0.75, and this would be 0.25. So they add up to 1. Or let's just do a couple other choices. What if this one is 0.4 and this one is 0.6? That would still add up to 100%, but it's in a decimal, so it add up to 1. So some students have a hard time with that equation, but I'm going to move on and let's just use it. So you can randomly pick either one. So I just made this one x and this 1 minus x. And remember, all these, if these were in decimals, you know, if we drag, you know, drag the decimal over, okay, and then for these, we'd have to move it over. So remember, this one was 0 0.001 up there. And then this would have been 0 0.006. When we add these all up, they would only equal 1. I didn't do the last one, but you drag it over, okay? So that's why this equation works. And you don't want to do 100. Then what you're going to do is you do have to use some basic algebra, okay? So this is going to be 150.92 times x. And then it's going to be 152.92, sorry, the page 3 is in the way, minus 152.92x, okay? Now, I'm going to have to move over my numbers here, so I'm just going to underline. i got to move this one over to the other side, so that means I'm going to subtract from 152.92 from that side, and then I also have to subtract 152.92 from this side, or have a negative value. When you, when you add these two up, I'm just going to tell you because I'm running out of room, and maybe time in the video, this is 0.96, and then it equals, I'm just going to add these two up, so this number plus this one, these would be, you know, these would basically be canceled at this point, I'm just going to go like this, these would be gone, they'd be on the other side, so if you add this and this, which really you end up subtracting, you get um, a negative 2.00x, so then you have to divide both sides by the negative 2, and hopefully you know that two negatives will cancel. So really we end up with 0.96 divided by, I'm just going to say 2 equals x. And if you calculate that out on your calculator, you get 0.48. We're just going to keep two sig figs even though, you know, we could probably carry out more. What that means then, if this was 0.48, okay, you would multiply by 100. That means it would be 48%. And this might match what you thought because they were pretty, pretty equal, weighted. So then 1 minus that, okay, so if you do, you know, uh, 1 minus 0.48, which is the x, I get 0.52. Probably could do that in your head, but just in case, 
So this was 0.52, but again, to get it into an abundance, it's 52%. So in the end, our final answers would be, you would write, I would write this out nicely. I would say that my europium, it's EU, um, 151 is, uh, that one was the 48% abundant. And my EU, uh, that one was 153. I'm just rounding it up. In fact, actually, we yeah, 151, yep. And then 153, I'm just rounding those um, those mass numbers kind of up, and which are t really truly masses for those mass uh, numbers for those different isotopes. So here are my two isotopes, and here are their abundance. It's about 50-50. But if you go back to the old gecko of this, and you remember we said it kind of equals about 152. And if you round this to 151 and you round that to 153, well, boom, 152 is pretty much right in the middle of both of those two. All right. So hopefully that helped. It adds on to our content of, you know, protons, neutrons, electrons, and isotopes. Um, and hopefully this video helped you calculate the atomic mass of an element. And if you run into these problems in your own homework, you have a great video to use to help you solve them. Last disclaimer one more time, please remind yourself that you never ever end up dividing by the number of isotopes. You never saw me do that here. The only thing I did divide, you know, by is 100 just to get my percents into decimals. All right, good luck chemist. Go forth and do some more problems on your own.